Hello everybody, it is your boy Twin Plays here, back in another video, I hope you guys are all doing amazing. So today in this video, we are going to be learning how to make a custom house claim proximity prompt. Um, you're going to be learning how to make a house, you're going to be learning how to custom do this, and it's going to have a custom GUI that allows you to change the house colors and allow you to change, uh, open and close the windows. Um, it's really cool, so feel free to just pay attention to this video, and um, yeah, so I would... Let's go straight into studio right now. All right, so as you open studio, I want you guys to go in the description, click the model link, okay? Now this model link is going to ha have everything in it. So either you can claim it, you can download it, you can do whatever you need to do, um, and you will be able to find it in your toolbox. So the toolbox should just be right up here. Um, now Roblox just released the new, um, all these new like images and stuff for the, uh, the layouts, like the studio, and man, I mean, it makes it look much better but I don't really like it because I've just been using the original like Roblox logos or whatever the studio assets for so long so now I'm just like get lost at some points but you know it's very modern but yeah so click this right here it should just give you the claim house right here and it's gonna load in a lot of stuff now um, I did three of these for you guys so you can kind of see what how this works now um, before we get more into detail about this uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button in the description um, it means a lot to me, you guys. Uh, we're almost at 29,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, I hope we get to 50K at least by the end of the year, I, I pray. And um, you should join the Discord. We actually just did a giveaway there. And you can join the Roblox group in the description. Um, it's really nice, so feel free to do that. But, um, yeah, so I actually did not make this. Dev Daniel was the one who just made this. Um, now... He it will be in the description as well, so feel free to check him out. Um, now, this this was actually for a different game, and, you know, we just haven't used it yet, so I decided this would be a great way of using it. But, um, yeah, so this is the model right here. Now, you can open the README. Um, this just talks about Dev Daniel. You can check him out on uh, Roblox. Um, but, yeah, so you can just delete it. And what I want you to do is you're going to ungroup all these into the certain places they need to go into. So we're going to ungroup this in RoopKit Storage. So Control-U works perfectly. Server script service down here, Control-U. And then we're going to go to server storage, control U, starter GUI, control U, and workspace, control U. So, how this works. Now, actually, I need to move these because I actually want to be able to, like, touch them and stuff and use them. So, how this works is you basically build the houses that you want. Now, there's a lot of folders, so you're going to get kind of confused. So, there's a folder in the map, in the workspace, called map. And then you have the houses, the templates, all that kind of jazz. So, you just need to worry about the houses. Now, it's labeled 1, 2, 3. And um, to create a new house, we'll actually just do one for you, and I'll show you. Um, we're going to just do four right here, okay? So, let's say you don't want these ones. Um, you can just rename it. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be named... Um, so don't worry about that now I don't know if I'm actually like lost or did Roblox like completely make it so I can't um... oh there we go R okay so let's say you wanted to build off of it so inside we have a folder called colorable and we have primary territory important and then windows so important has the owner and it's gonna be the value of the owner which will be the name which we'll talk about later and then we have the door right here now, um, customizing the door is a little different. So, I never really tried to customize a door, making it a model. Um, but what happens is um, this door, you'll be able to walk through, and you'll be able to lock it, unlock it, you know, anything in that range. Um, so, basically, we have the door. We have a proximity prompt right here. And what it says is claim. And then, of course, you can have the durations, which you can change uh, whatever you want. Uh, max activation distance. Feel free to just mess with that. Um, but then, of course, right here, we have the info UI. Now, he used a um, image label, if I'm right. I never new oh it looks like no he didn't it looks like he just used a ui gradient that's really cool so you can change this ui gradient if you'd like um your choice you know it really just depends to your likings i i've never actually done this before but if i'm right what happened is uh this ui gradient actually moves which is really really cool so um you know as we get this let's actually i'm gonna probably do like a white oh you know maybe something like this um that works fine. And we have the front right here and then the UI and then the owner label, which it will later be changed to who it is. So don't really mess with that, um, but you can mess with this just to your likings. But um, of course, you know, this is just how it looks. And then we have the windows right here. Now the windows can be duplicated. You can put them anywhere. And um, 
yeah, so you know when you open it right here, you just this is, I did glass material. Um, you can do whatever you want, like cobblestone. Um, you can make the transparency even more if you'd like, like a 0 0.2, 0 0.15, and then what's going to happen really is it's going to set it back. So I'll, I'll really talk about that with you in a sec here. Um, now, so this why are there in folders well they're in folders because we are going to be accessing them from the server so in here we have primary secondary and ter uh, territory territory i don't know how to say that um what happens is you get to choose three colors for your house so you can this gui which i'll show you in a bit here you'll be able to choose so basically we have all these parts now this is going to be the third color we want to customize so whatever colors you make as in saying literally like any colors guys um those colors are going to be what are in here so you can just mess with this and you want to make it to your liking now you don't want all of them to be primary you want some secondary you know you can make like primary maybe the outside all of the outside you can maybe make the um territory the floor and the floor only um so that's kind of the whole point of this now what's inside is the default color which is this value which gets changed later on so that's about it. Um, pretty simple. And making the houses is really just up to your liking. Just make sure they're in the folders and that's about it. Um, now this honestly could work if you do have a tycoon, if I'm right, you could implement this. But um, in here we have these events, which is color change, lock, lock on all clients, lock prompt and notification event, which are remote events, of course. And this will happen by firing to the server, to the client and client to the server. So um, I will just talk about quickly we can go into client handler and we'll, we'll get later into this and then we're gonna talk about the house edit UI. so let's actually do this first um so of course you can't see it right now but inside um if i do make this visible you're gonna get a mainframe like this and it's gonna have this little image label right here now you will want to change this to whatever image so i don't know you guys may have a custom one like this i'll just you know maybe i'll just do this for now like something fun um yeah let me just sorry let me click that again so that will work fine what's going to happen is when you click it it's going to actually open up something like this which will basically pop up all the colors you can do so once you click primary secondary territory it's going to send to the server which color you want to do now of course we have the color wheel so this is what it's going to look like you're able to customize it we actually use this color wheel in our last few videos so i recommend checking those out but um yeah so just make sure this is unvisible again and then we have the client handler and of course we have the house handler right here um, and inside is other which is the windows handler so in the client handler basically what happens is we have on client events this is basically just for the client when the person gets to lock the house or when they claim it in general it's going to send them a notification now these notifications are going to be on the side of the screen basically on the core gui and it's going to say that this is your property you know thank you um, and then of course we have the proximity prompts like lock unlock and it's going to change that so when the proximity prompt gets triggered if it's locked then it's going to say you know it's unlock it's going to say that your house has been locked players can no longer enter your house so this is a debounce right here um right basically right here so we're basically going to check if it's locked if it's not locked then we're going to do the opposite of what it is um, then we have lock on all clients, which basically means we are going to the house, find important, and we're going to set the can collide to the value, which would be false, of course. Now, by this, that basically means no one can enter your house, so you don't have to worry about people getting into here. Now, um, of course, we have a notification event, which we'll talk about in a bit here. Um, this is what basically just sends it to the client, which is notifications is just the things in the bottom right corner, which you'll see. Now, in the house handler, it's a little different. Um, we're going to go to the windows handler first real quick. Um, so basically, we're going to do um, all this stuff. <laughs> basically, we have a prompt and we are going to find the window in their uh, value. So basically, we're assigning this house to them. So we're going to make sure we go into the right house. And what we're going to do is we are going to check that value and we are going to open it if the value if the value has been changed or if it's not. So basically, we're saying... Um, window open close and we're going to change that proximity prompt and then it's say error if they don't as in saying if they don't this is not their window we will say you can't close this window you can't open this window um dev daniel did a really great job of this so give him some tips up for that because he did amazing um and yeah so now loading into the house handler which i want to explain really everything in general in a bit here um 
we have all these local variables, we have a local function called claim house. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a door and we're going to set can collide to false. And then we get the um, proximity prompt, set it to false, and they're going to be able to lock it. Um, and we basically will display on the text right here, which is this. Um, we're going to display their names. And then, of course, we have the local value of the owner, and we're going to be setting that to um, what the player is. So this is how we check what house they own. And then, of course, so a player value house um, right here and locked prompt event fire client. So this is where we kind of get to the um, claim house, the, you know, if it's triggered of the proximity prompt. Um, so we're going to do the claim house. You know, you already own a house. This house is already owned by someone. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So you, he's checking if, you know, you already own a house, if you don't own a house. And if you don't, we're going to claim that house for you, which we're going to be using that local function right here. Now, um, over here, we have the player removing. So basically, when the player leaves, it's going to find their house. It is going to clear it, and it will set the chat the default color, set it back to the default color, as in saying, basically, everything will be turning back to gray. Um, and then, of course, we have the lock event on server. So basically, when they do the lock event, it's going to fire to the client, and it's going to be sending it to everyone so we make sure that it is locked. Now, for the color change event, this is where it gets kind of cool. So... This is where I was talking about. So local colorable folder is going to be in the house, their house, so which you're getting that value, and it's going to be in one of these folders. So in the colorable, we're going to find primary, and we're going to get all of the children. Now you could do get descendants, but we're not. We don't need to do that. We just need to get the children because we're grabbing these parts right here. Now if this is where it gets a little complicated. So if you wanted to just do a model, okay, instead of a part. Okay, now this is this is where it gets a little different. These are parts. Now, if you wanted to make a model, you would basically need to go in here and you would need to do another for loop. So you'd basically be like saying for the parts as well. But you're going to go um, like this child in I pairs, colorable folder. And then, um, sorry, let's just make sure we're doing this right. Bot primary. And then we're going to do um, get descendants. Oh my gosh. Like that. I think that's that's not spelled right. That's weird. Normally the um, text would automatically do it for you. I actually wonder why. That's weird. Okay, so that's what you do. And what that's doing is grabbing everything, including inside the model. So you would basically, if you had a model like already made, it'd be grabbing all that. And you would need to do if um, child is a, and then you'd go part like this, then child dot color equals color. So that's like another thing you would add. Basically, this is checking if there is a model. And if there is, we'll go inside the model, find the parts, and change the color. So that's another way of doing that, just a for loop, um, something basic like that. But yeah, so secondary, tertiary, and um, primary. And of course, it's going to talk about what part, which we'll send in the event. Um, and then we have a gradient right here. And this gradient is basically just this um, right here on the door. And it's going to be rotating. So he, he did an amazing job. I mean, I really like... Yeah, that Daniel is an amazing trip there. So if, um, you know, so what you, basically what you do is you just hit play here. Um, now, this is not a saving kind of thing. This is just a um, thing you can just set up and use. But, of course, you go in here and, of course, we have all these things. So if I hit claim, it's going to do this real quick. Actually, no, let's just show you. So you cannot open this window because I don't, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not claimed to this. So if I hold E down, I should be able to open it. It's going to claim it. You claimed a house. It is now your property. It has my name on it, and it has this little sign right here. So I can open the windows. That doesn't mean I can't go through them, of course, but it does mean I can open them. So that's really cool. That's the part of it that makes this awesome. Now, if I open lock, if I turn lock on, your house has been locked. Players can no longer enter your house. So you can always do this, even when you hit unlock. So your house has been unlocked. So that's what's really cool. Now, I mean... There would be a really nice way to like have it so you can actually like open the door and you know it's like it does animations. Um, I may do another tutorial if you guys want that. Um, honestly, really simple. You'd basically just check if it's locked or unlocked, and then you'd basically just set the C frame to something else. But so we have red. I want that to change to secondary. So you change color to secondary. Um, I want it to be let's say yellow for territory this would be yellow i want it to be blue for primary that's what it would be now you can customize these really nice you know like you can make it really modern um but yeah so it really just depends like how you build the house um you want to make it really nice so what honestly what i'd recommend and which is really cool you can do it from scratch like do a house build a house from scratch and then 
think about, you know, is this going to work? Like, is this going to look good? Um, and then you will be putting the parts into the folders one by one and just making sure that's, you know, a cool way of doing it. Um, but, you know, you really just want to spread it out. But be creative. Make your houses super simple, you guys. So, I, I mean, if you need a little more tutorial real quick, I can just, you know, duplicate a part. Um, just like this and make sure it's in the folder and of course this is going to be used um, as you know whatever it is um, and you can change the material down here you know what whatever you guys like but um, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did feel free to comment like subscribe and share um, I will see you guys in the next one